A common question that I get is, do you need to take your required minimum distribution, RMD, from each separate account, or can you take the total RMD from just one account? Well, the answer is, it depends. And in today's video, we're gonna walk you through an example of someone who has eight accounts, some that are the same, some that are different, and we're gonna talk about when they need to take a required minimum distribution, RMD, from each separate account, or when they can group some of the accounts together and then just take the overall RMD from just one account. Plus, we're gonna talk about ways to potentially avoid taking your RMDs and avoid those taxes, and then what to do, options of what to do with your RMD once you take it. All right, before we get into the example, I think it's first important to know which types of accounts that RMDs apply to, and then also how it's calculated, because you have to calculate it for each account that you own. So first off, which types of accounts do the RMDs apply to? Well, it applies to the 401k, 403b, 457, your IRA, your SEP IRA, or your simple IRA. If you have any of those types of accounts, you're going to have to take an RMD. And then how is it calculated? Well, the way that it's calculated, it's all based on the prior year, year end value. So let's just say you're in 2024, um, or we're just gonna use the example of the year 2024. Your 2024 RMD is based on the 1231.23 account value. And then you're going to take that and divide it by the IRS life expectancy that is going to tell you what your rmd is and you have to calculate that for each account once you've done the calculation then you'll know what your total rmd required minimum distribution is that you have to take out for the entire for that year now let's go to our example of when can you take the RMD from a group of accounts, or when do you have to take it from each individual account? And let's just say this example, these accounts are on an individual basis, and RMDs are on an individual basis, meaning we're just going to say Mary owns all of these different accounts. Now, if Mary is married and she's married to Bob, well, Mary is gonna have her accounts that she has to take RMDs from, Bob's gonna have his accounts that he needs to take RMDs from, but they're not intermixed. They don't come together. If somebody passes away, now that's a totally different scenario. We're just assuming that everyone is alive in this scenario and we're talking about when um, you have to take RMDs. So this is, again, RMDs are specific to an individual. We're gonna say these are Mary's accounts. We're also going to say we've done the calculation already. So each box that you see here on the screen Mary has to take a $10,000 RMD from each box, each account that you see on the screen. So let's walk through it. When can you group accounts together and take like one RMD from one account? Or when do you have to take RMDs from each individual account? Well, first off is you are able to look at IRAs as basically together as a group. So I'm gonna draw a line right here. Again, you have to calculate for each individual account, but over here we've got four IRAs. We've got two right, traditional IRAs. We've got a SEP IRA. We've got a simple IRA. I said, uh, just in our example here, she's gonna take a $10,000 RMD from each account. So that means over here, she has to take $40,000 in RMDs. Well, what Mary can do is she can take $10,000 from each account, or what she could do is she could just pick one account it doesn't matter which one, and take the total $40,000 from that account. Or another thing she could do is she could take $35,000 from this account, and maybe she wants to take the other $5,000 from a different account, again, to get to the total $40,000. She can take from three accounts, she can take from all four accounts, she can take different amounts. Doesn't matter as long as it adds up to the $40,000 for the group considered the IRA accounts. Again, has to be the group of IRA accounts. IRA, SEP IRA, simple IRA. Now, a totally different grouping is 403B accounts, different than the IRAs. Now, 403B accounts can also be grouped together, but they can't be grouped together with IRA accounts. So 
Again, going to draw a line here. Take a look at this. The 403B accounts are looked at their own separate group. In this scenario, let's again say each box, $10,000 RMD. Mary's got to take $20,000 from these 403B accounts. She can take it from each account, $10,000 each. Or what she could do is she could take $15,000 from one account, $5,000 from the other, or what she could do is she could just take all 20,000 from one account and zero from the other. So 403B accounts, you're also able to group those together. Now, everything changes when it comes to 401Ks, and the other thing that you could do is you could take out the 401K and you could put in 457. Everything changes when it comes to 401Ks and 457s. When it comes to 401Ks, you need to take your RMD from each 401k. So instead of having a box that just is over here, it's actually a line that goes here. And each 401k, again, let's just say you've got a $10,000 RMD that you need to take. When it comes to 401ks, you have to take your RMD from each separate 401k account. And so we've got to take 10,000 from this account here and 10,000 from this account here. Now, how often should you take your RMD throughout the year? Well, that's all up to you. What you can do is you can take a lump sum, you can take it monthly, you can take it quarterly, you can take it randomly. The overall is that you just have to take it all by the end of the year. Otherwise, you're going to incur what they call as an excise tax if you don't take your required minimum distribution and it's 25% of the amount that you fail to take. If you correct it within a timely fashion, they'll reduce that penalty to 10%. But that's why you want to make sure that you take your required minimum distribution by the end of the year to help you avoid that excess tax. Now, before we get into the ways to potentially avoid taking your required minimum distribution. So far, I hope that you're enjoying this video and finding some value and benefit in it. If so, and you'd like to see additional videos about social security and how to minimize the taxes on your IRAs and 401ks, subscribe to our YouTube channel as we're coming out with new videos each and every week on retirement topics just like those. All right, so how to potentially avoid taking your required minimum distributions? Well, there's um, two ways that you could potentially avoid taking some or all of your required minimum distribution. One way is if you're actually still working. So let's just say Mary is working for this company over here on the far right hand side. She's still making contributions to that 401k that's on the far right hand side there. Well, then if Mary's still working and she's still working for that employer, she actually does not have to take that required minimum distributions. She's not required to take distributions from that account until she retires. So there's a way if you have a 401k and you're still working, you don't have to take the, um, the required minimum distributions. Once you retire though, you need to take it. The other way to take and uh, potentially avoid some or all of your RMD would be through what's called a qualified charitable distribution, where you give that amount directly to a charitable organization. When you do, it doesn't come into your account, it goes directly to the charity, therefore you are not taxed on that RMD that you needed to take because it went directly to the charity. So that's, that's one way is to avoid potentially taking your RMD. I know people want to avoid taking them because, well, when you take the money out, you have to pay tax on every dollar that you take out. So what should you do with your RMD once you've taken it? A common question that I get is, can you roll it over into another IRA? Nope, can't do that. Can you roll it into a Roth IRA? Nope, can't do that either. Can you do a Roth conversion with it? Nope, sorry. You can't do that either. So here's some things that you can do with your required minimum distribution once you take it. You could spend it. I mean, that's probably what you save the money for, but let's just say you don't necessarily need your RMD or you wanna save it as a backup for a later date. Well, one thing that you can do then is save it or invest it. You can put it into a non-retirement investment account. 
You can use the QCD, Qualified Charitable Distribution Process that we talked about earlier. Or another thing that you can do is utilize it to pay tax that you owe. For example, I have uh, clients where um, they had taxes due from other things that they were doing. Well, what they did is they took their RMD and they sent it 100% in their scenario, in their situation, uh, directly to the IRS for the federal taxes that they would owe for other things in their life or other uh, withdrawals that they had taken. So maybe you want to send some of it or all of it or a portion of it um, to the IRS for taxes that you would owe. Hey, I hope that you found this video to be of value and benefit. And if you're wondering what to do with your RMD, how much of it you can spend or what you should do with it or how to reinvest it to maximize, help maximize your retirement story, you can go to lifemoneyshow.com and click on the work with us tab as we can help you out with understanding how much you can spend in retirement and how to minimize the taxes on your IRAs and 401ks. And if you enjoyed the video, subscribe to our YouTube channel as we're coming out with new videos each and every week on different retirement topics. Thanks and have a great day.